In today's video, we're going to be painting up a knight on a horse from the Pathfinder Deep Cuts range. Okay, so starting off with this miniature here, we're going to start off with some of the contrast paints by Citadel, and we're going to be using Gore Grunter Fur, and we're going to be using this to paint up the the horse itself. So we're going to be using this to give us uh, the horse colour um, for the main thing and the great thing is about these uh, contrast paints is they're nice and easy to go down and they work really well as to getting into the recesses and the Gorgranta Fur I really like the colour of this especially um, for like as it suggests for fur colour it comes out really really nice so making sure we give a nice even uh, coating over the, all the horses uh, fur we can see all over there it can be a little bit tricky to get that all the way down in there um, but if you need to you can come in with a smaller brush and just try your best to get in there as much as you can I know it's, I know it can be really tricky but just try your best then once we have all the horse painted up we're going to come in now with some more contrast paints and this one's going to be wildwood and we're going to be using this to just paint the horse's tail on this and it's going to be a nice uh, difference in color between the horse's uh, hair on his tail compared to the hair on the rest of his body um, and this is my first time using the wildwood color and it's actually a really nice a really nice sort of almost blacky brown good color in contrast to the rest then once we have that painted up we're going to move on to the main color that we're going to be using which is going to be dragon red and we're going to be using this to paint our uh, horses, I believe they're called, it's called a uh, horse costume for, or a horse, I was having a look online anyway and as far as I could see they're called horse costumes these uh, sort of cloaks over a horse and I was actually struggling to think of a colour to paint this uh, horse costume up because on the, on the, like, the official artwork that comes on the box it's all white as well as the knight being white and I didn't want so much white on the miniature I wanted to have a lot of color to pop out so I was trying to think of a color and it was actually my uh, mum who came up with the uh, color scheme for this and I think it's turn, turned out pretty well uh, like you can see at the end once it's all completed um, so <laughs> big thanks to her for picking out the color because I was wasn't sure for what colors I was going to be painting this up and then once we have all our red completed we're going to come in now with fur brown and we're going to be using the fur brown to paint up uh, the saddle on our horse here so it's just a little bit it's not too much sticking out so it, uh, come on with a finer brush if you need to and also try and avoid painting as much of uh, the fur brown onto the red as we can so it's why it's always good to use a smaller brush in, uh, if you really need to and also too while you're painting up the uh, saddle of this horse that he does have a little bit of the saddle showing on the front of the knight there and then with that completed we're going to come in now with an oak brown and we're going to be using the oak brown to paint up uh, our horse is it budding or uh, the, the, anyway the, the straps on the the, the horse here um, we want to come in there really paint all over that trying to be careful to avoid everything we've already uh, painted on here so again if you need to come in with a smaller brush and he has all that uh, leather working all over his face as well and I'm also going to be using this color to paint up the inside of the shield for our night too so uh, don't forget to do that as well while you're painting up all the leather working and uh, barding all that stuff on the horse it can be a little bit tricky to get into the, the pose is quite tough but <laughs> just have to keep moving it around until you can find that perfect angle that you need to paint all this stuff and then with all that complete we're going to come in now with plate mail metal and we'll be using the plate mail metal to be painting all the metal work on our knight here so we're going to be painting up the uh, leg armor going to have some armor up on his uh, helmet of course, his sword, all his uh, arm work on his pauldrons and stuff, we want to make sure we get a good coat on all of that so if, if you need to come in with a second coat and also uh, don't forget to paint the other side of the horse <laughs> I know a couple of times 
when I was painting, I was forgetting, especially when it came to the budding and stuff, I wasn't forgetting until a little bit later on, oh yeah, I've got to paint the other side, or just trying to get into around all these areas. Since this night is uh, in a cool pose, but it can be quite hard to get into some of these places, so there's a lot of uh, angling with my hand and stuff, and I'm sorry if the whole thing's not in focus the whole time, but it's trying to, or even in frame, and it's just trying to get the the right angle and stuff to paint this and in front of a camera is also quite hard as well. And then with all our metal work complete we're going to move on now with mummy robes and we're going to be using the mummy robes to be painting the main uh, clothing of our knight here. So we want a good coverage of this now. Uh, the mummy robes is quite a light colour on top of the miniature that's already uh, primed here. Uh, it's also a very similar colour, so it may be a little bit hard to see on camera. Um, but the mummy robes is a, a off, an off-white, so it should stick out a little bit. As well as I'm going to also do the shield in this uh, mummy robes as well. Um, so you may need to come in with a couple of coats on the mummy robes over all the clothing and the shield as well, since it's so close to the primer that's already on here. Just adding a few layers uh, once once each layer is dry, don't forget about that. Coming back over the second layer, and you'll be able to get that uh, colour to really show through then. And once all that's painted up, what we're going to be doing now is we're going to actually move on to the base, and we're going to be using some Vallejo Earth texture here. And I'm going to be placing this on all over the base because I'm going to try and come up with a really cool uh, basing sort of scene. I want sort of a scenery for this horse and night to be on rather than having it sort of as a plain uh, base with the bit in the middle so I want, I want to go all out for this so adding on here the uh, Vallejo uh, earth texture here giving it a real good uh, covering here and I'm just applying it with uh, a sort of like a clay sculpting tool just in anything, you may want to use a, a popsicle stick or something to get it on there. Just as much as you can, I'm trying to spread over the whole piece. And then once all that's dry, which is going to take a little while to, uh, we're going to come in now with another contrast paint, which is snake bite leather. And I'm going to be using this to cover all of the earth texture that we just painted on. And it's actually going to come out with a really cool color that I uh, actually really like uh, for an earthy texture combined with this... Um, texture paint that we've got here um, once all the snake bite leather is all uh, completely dry but I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with my basing scheme so I'm just doing this on here in case I have any uh, anything showing through or I want to leave a bit of the ground and that that's what I'm gonna be doing with that now with all that earth texture done up we're gonna come in now with some dark stone and we're gonna be using the dark stone to be painting in the eyes of our horse and I'm also going to be using it to paint in the hooves of our horse. So I've just grabbed a, a lot finer brush here, just a little dab on the end of it. And I'm just dotting it in, trying to get the eye detail in there. Now, it's going to be quite hard to get in, which is why I've used such a smaller brush, because it is so tiny against all this uh, miniature in here. It's got so much going on. So uh, if... <laughs> if you're like me and you have a tinier brush, just go for it as much as you can. Or if you need to, come in with a bigger brush and then you could slowly paint the areas back. It's a little bit harder, but a little bit of practice you should be able to get it. Okay, so now what we're going to be doing is we're going to come in with some leather brown now. And we're going to be using the leather brown to be painting up the uh, belt of our knight he, uh, on his uh clothing he's got on he's got a little belt around the waist so we want to get that with our leather brown and again coming in with a finer brush to do this and just really trying not to get over the areas that we've already worked on with our paint um, but if you do don't worry about it just wait for it to dry and then come back in with the uh, colors in this case the mummy robes to cover it back over with now that we have the leather belt done, we're going to come in now with Dragon Red. And what we're going to be doing with the Dragon Red that we used on our horse beforehand is we're actually going to be painting up our knight's mask. Because uh, 
on the, the cover artwork he actually has a red mask on there and I quite like that um, sort of look of the knight on there so that's what I'm copying and I think it goes quite well with our uh, red co covered horse and just coming in with a fine brush to do this is really fine detail but just trying it as best as I can to get it uh, as much of that sort of cool face covering look as I can apply to and then once I've done that I'm going to come in now with an, an even finer brush and I'm going to be trying to trace over the the design on the shield now I haven't really done this type of work before so I'm, I'm not the best at it but I've just come in with a super fine brush and I'm just trying to trace it around to the best of my ability um, getting it over there and then of course uh, if you're trying it out yourself um, you may be better at this at this than I am um, but if you mess up like uh, I did a couple of times I just waited for it to dry come in with our mummy robes again paint over the area that I've uh, messed up and then come back and and start again it's good good practice anyway and now you can see I got that design painted on there so what we're going to do now is we're going to move on with some Agrax Earthshade and we're going to be using the Agrax Earthshade to cover pretty much the entirety of our miniature here except for the metal on our knight. We're going to be leaving that with a, a different wash so I've just grabbed a lot wider brush here and I'm really laying it on pretty thick uh, with the Agrax Earthshade really trying to get a good shade over the whole thing and again like I said including the uh, knight's clothing and just trying to avoid a little bit well as much as I can anyway of the knight's armor because we're going to come in with a different wash and do all that so make sure uh, you can get as much of this over the miniature as you can and then once our Agrax Earthshade is dry what we're going to do now is we're going to come in with some known oil and this is what we're going to be using our uh, known oil for which is to be doing it over all the middle of our knight as well as our shield on our knight as well we've also done this in the known oil you may want to do it with the um, Agrax Earthshade but I've, I wanted to give it since it's supposed to be metal it may be painted metal um, but I want to give it that sort of cohesive look with all the metal working on our knight here Okay, so now we have that done, we're going to come back in with Dragon Red now. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be picking out all the highest points on our horse here. Just really trying to catch all those edges and coming back over top with that Dragon Red to really make them pop out amongst uh, the wash that we've just placed on. And it should look really effective trying to get all those areas. So being careful, trying to just get it as I said uh, all those top areas and there's quite a lot on this miniature so don't, don't be afraid to be a little bit brave with it and just avoid painting over any of the other areas that we've already painted and just spend your time really trying to get them as right as possible giving a good coverage over the whole thing and then once we have all those highlights on the horse all painted up we're going to come back in again with the mummy robes and we're going to be using this to paint the highlights on our knight. So all the highest areas again like we did with our horse and we want to pick out all those nice high folds that the miniature has on there with the mummy robes which is actually going to really pop out now since we have all that Agrax Earthshade on there and it's going to give uh, really good depth to our miniature. So just trying to be careful and hit all those high points and not paint over anything any of the other areas that we've already painted over before. And now that we have that complete, what we're going to do now is we're going to come in with a matte black and we're going to be putting a stripe along the bottom of our uh, horse costume here to add in a bit more detail. Uh, like my mum said, that she, uh, when she came up with the idea, um, wanted to have it black and red so it would really pop out. And I think it really does, especially adding this uh, stripe on here is adding a lot more uh, visual interest to the whole miniature than if we were just to have it as one color and um, since the miniature on the the packet that it shows you for the test example uh, it's all just completely white and I, I was like I was saying before that just 
having a white knight on top of the white horse was really going to um, sort of just be too much plain boring for me. So I wanted to mix it up and then my mum suggesting this colour uh, with a black trim around it. It looks really cool. Um, and of course we're just going again carefully uh, as, I, as much as I can trying to uh, give off a nice even stripe across the whole miniature. Okay, so now what we're going to do once all that is all dried up is we're going to come in now with the leather brown and I'm, all I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be dry brushing the base here. So I'm just going to be really rough with it and really just get a good nice covering of our leather brown over the whole base. I'm still a little unsure what I'm going to do with this but um, I, I want to have it sort of still pop out anyway with all that nice texture from the Vallejo Earth texture on it. Okay, so what I'm actually going to be doing with the base now is I'm going to be placing some of this... Uh, grass flocking on it. Now I've never actually used this stuff before and this is uh, Warlord Games Battlefield basing. Um, I've never used any of this type of flock before. I've used ones like you've seen in my previous video which has been the foam flock. So I don't actually know what the difference is between this uh, grass flock and the foam flock. Uh, hoping it has the same sort of effect but what I've done is I've just placed some PVA glue all over the bottom of our base and I'm just coming over top with the uh, flocking on here and I'm not sure how much coverage I'm getting over the whole thing so that's why I did the whole base uh, brown and stuff so if I miss some areas it's going to look like ordinary dirt. And then once all that uh, dry now it's not dry completely I've still got a little bit of uh, space on here and I'm going to come in with some uh, more of the Warlock games uh, basing materials and stuff that they have so I'm using some grass tufts here as well as some uh, flowers um, to really add a lot more cool interest to this base and I must say uh, my first time using the flocking it's actually really good I, I, I think I actually prefer it over the uh, the foam flock uh, it gives off a really cool uh, natural grass feel and with especially with all these colors in it and stuff uh, it looks really nice so uh, I'm also just adding in these bigger tufts in here to give off visual more visual interest like I said and trying to really make this base really pop out and I think having these different types of tufts um, watch the Warlords Games tufts are actually a lot cheaper than most other brands of tufts which is really good so I was able to pick up quite a few different ones that I'll be using on miniatures in the future including flowers isn't something I would usually pick up uh, in tufts but since they have cheaper uh, they're, they're a little bit cheaper. I was able to go out and pick a few different ones that I wouldn't normally buy. So I chose a couple of flowers and like these ones here which are really big long tufts. Wouldn't be ones I usually buy but um, since Warlord Games have them a little bit cheaper um, just another cool option to have on basing my miniatures. completed we have finished our night on our horse here and you can see that it looks really nice it popped out really well especially uh, having the red with the black stripe on there it really added a lot of visual interest to our night and having all the new flocking that I've tried out for the first time has uh, given it a really cool realistic looking sort of scenic base on there just a lot of these little things coming together has really come together in a nice cool cohesive piece of our miniature and um, I'm really happy with the way it turned out so I'm hopeful this has been helpful to you guys in case you want to paint it up like this or just see a cool miniature being painted up and um, I'd just like to thank you all for watching and if you enjoyed the video uh, please consider subscribing and check out more but until next, next time guys I'll 
See you later.